Welcome to Whole and Unleashed, a podcast about coming home to ourselves, featuring conversations with special guests on topics related, but not limited to burnout, mindset, fulfillment, transitions, wellness, and so much more. I am your host, Jessica Locke, Astrala Yoga Guide and Holistic Wellness Coach. And this podcast is not about telling you what to do. I believe we all have the answers we need within. This podcast is here to inspire you, help you find clarity, and maybe give you an extra nudge towards living wholeheartedly. And of course, we'll be sharing tools and strategies from our guests to embrace your inner wisdom and live unleashed. Ready to dive in? Sometimes I get in my own way. I'll admit it. So much of my inner growth has been about me noticing how my beliefs and fears were keeping me stuck. I've overrided my intuition so many times in the past with fears appearing as logic or rationale. I didn't trust my inner guidance because that meant letting go of control and expectations. But we can't really control anything but ourselves and how we react. Whatever goals we set to fulfill, it's a dance of co-creation between you, the people around you, and the universe. In today's episode, my guest Grace Dwan talks about strengthening your intuition through tarot and why it's so important to release expectations. Grace Dwan is the founder, artist, and author of Mystic Mondays, a popular tarot deck and app expanded to include the Crystal Grid deck and the upcoming Cosmic Creatures deck. Grace is on a mission to empower people to connect with their own intuition, no matter where they are. She combines metaphysics into a vibrant visual language that transcends ancient esoterics for today's modern generation, using modern metaphysics to enhance self-awareness, inner wisdom, and deeper connection. She believes that the more inner work we do, the more we can show up in the world as our most empowered and authentic selves. In today's episode, Grace shares how an energy session helped her realize the blocks she was holding on to, how she turned challenges into opportunities, from experiencing shipping damages to her first campaign ever, to cold emailing a publisher and getting published in the same year, her intention behind her company Mystic Mondays, and how she's making metaphysics more accessible while empowering others to connect with their inner wisdom through her art, color, and tech. Learning to release expectations to make space for messages, lessons, and abundance, and choosing to carve her own path to honor her inner truth despite facing many kinds of resistance and obstacles. And so much more. Come join our conversation. Hi, Grace. (laughs) Thank you so much for joining me here today. I am so excited for our conversation. And before we dive in into everything that you do, the world that you've created, I wanted to ask you a little bit more about your background. Who are you and what do you do? Sure. Hey, Jess, thanks for having me on. I'm so excited. So that's a big question. Who am I? The universal question. Uh, well, I'm most known for being the creator of Mystic Mondays. So the founder, artist, and author. And it's basically a suite of popular tarot and oracle decks as well as an app. And um, I, I truly believe in empowering people to listen to their own intuition because that increases their self-awareness. And the more inner work that we do, the more we're able to show up in the world as our most empowered and authentic selves. So I mix a lot of different things. I don't fit neatly into any boxes. I'm in the publishing world, but I'm also in tech. I am an artist, an author, but I also am a businesswoman. Uh, So (laughs) there's a lot of different things that happen in the the realm that I'm in. Oh, I love that. I love that you started with, you know, you are not containing the label. You do a little bit of everything that you enjoy. Mm-hmm. So how did your career journey started per se? I know it's not linear and there's many, 
many, many steps along the way, but what, what would be the start of this empire you feel like can I call it an empire is it weird to call oh it yeah that? yeah it's <laughs> totally an empire <laughs> yes. so I would say it's all really interconnected and that's how I like to view the world uh, but my background is in design and that's what I went to college for and before that I always knew art was going to be a part of my career somehow and then somewhere along the way, I would say after I graduated, I moved out to LA for a job and I actually got fired after about two months. And that was kind of the start of my spiritual journey. And that journey has definitely informed me and in how I've transformed my career into my own path because I just found myself feeling depressed and found myself feeling like, I was trying to find purpose in my work. And so after I had gotten fired, I actually booked an energy healing session because it was cheaper than therapy at the time. And I could feel all of these different blocks inside of me moving, if I could call them blocks, but there was something non-physical that was stuck in my throat for about three days after that session. And it really got me thinking and and feeling, most importantly, that there are a lot of things, unprocessed emotions, a lot of stuck things inside of me that needed to be expressed. And at the time, I also lived near a mystic metaphysical bookshop called Mystic Journey Bookstore. And I would go there all the time um, and they had a rotating list of tarot readers. And so I would go get these tarot readings. And for me, it felt more like therapy more than anything scary, like the stereotypical uh, tarot readers that you see on TV or anything like that. It was, it was very affirming. And I think that's what I needed at the time. However, as I went on with my journey and you know, kept going with my different jobs. I eventually started freelancing for myself. I just kept feeling that nagging feeling of that there was something more, that I was meant to do more, and that I really, really cared about having purpose in my life. And since work was such a huge part of me and what I do, and I care about work so much, that I needed my work to have some sort of purpose too. And it got me along different journeys of trying things, you know, but eventually it landed with this. And I think the way the universe responded to that was also a sign for me that this was the path that I was meant to be on. Because after I had decided to create my own tarot deck, for a lot of different reasons, one, I couldn't find one that I really loved. And I think Mystic Mondays was one of the first of its kind to really break that mold of uh, becoming this staple of a modern tarot deck with its vibrant colors and relatable language and I really wanted it to feel like a best friend was talking to you and they do say tarot decks and and any other deck that you may have like oracle decks that they do tend to have their own language so to speak and so I wanted Mystic Mondays to feel like a best friend was talking to you and I just couldn't relate to the other tarot decks that were out there they seemed outdated and not necessarily made for someone that looked like me. And so that was the part of that journey of just realizing, hey, if I'm feeling this way, then possibly someone else out there is probably feeling this way too. And the other part of it was after receiving so many tarot readings over the years, I just felt that I was seeking outside of myself. I was looking for this external validation that I would be okay, that I was on the right path. And for me to create my own tarot deck, it was very much of coming back to myself and listening to my own inner wisdom and accessing that part of myself, my inner voice that had been shut down for quite a while. So a lot of this was really coming back home to me. And I know you talk a lot about that, Jess, uh, but it's very much of just uncovering my truth and how I choose to accept myself, not necessarily what society or, you know, parents or whatever, whoever might think they have a say in my journey. And of course they have impacted my journey. 
Uh, but it's really about coming home to yourself and coming back to the truth of who you are. And since launching Mystic Mondays as a Kickstarter in 2017, I experienced a lot of changes in a good way. So a lot of what I was taught and what I had modeled was this very patriarchal way of moving in the world, which is very like, you got to do things, you have to be a go-getter, you have to be proactive. And that's not to say I'm not any of those things now, but what that Kickstarter had done for me was really embrace this divine feminine energy of receiving and asking for help and putting yourself out there and just uh, in a really graceful way for a lack of better words. Um, and a lot of things happened for me. Like, for example, I had my first solo show, a pop-up show at the Urban Outfitter space, uh, Space 1520 in LA. Uh, and then I ended up getting published because I experienced shipping damages to the majority of the decks I had ordered. And it was super unfortunate. But I think, you know, I'm a believer that everything happens for a reason. So because that happened, I cold emailed one publisher and then they ended up picking up my deck three weeks later. So, you know, I sent them an email not expecting any answer. And by the way, only one publisher out of all the other publishers out there. Um, and then, you know, I got, got a response back the week later, um, sent them a sample, got an offer, ended up getting a literary agent like that same week. It was so nuts. It just happened so fast. And and this is pretty unusual for publishing, but they printed it the same year too. So it got picked up in early 2018. And then in October, it was published and released to basically the world. Oh and that's because yeah. <laughs> that's, I, I love how you started the journey with like, you know, I graduated university and then I got fired, but then all those great things happen. And it's just such a huge testament of how you're taking and reclaiming your power and putting kind of your energy into what you really want to accomplish. And a no is, you know, a no in one way, but it doesn't mean that it's a no for every other aspects of your life. So I love that you started with that and how even getting no's, you're getting more opportunities, even the way that you phrase it, you know, someone, you know, all these problems happen with shipping with the deck and people will be so discouraged and they would want to fix the problem, which of course you were doing, but then you also felt that burst of energy. You know what? I'm also going to reach out to a publisher. <laughs> and it's amazing to see that. And first of all, I really want to say your art and everything you do with Mystic Mondays, your tarot is beautiful. It's so vibrant. It's such a huge reflection of your transformation, what you hope that people will, re will receive when they get it. And it's, I don't know, it's just this vibrant, vibrant energy. I just wanted to tell you that <laughs> for anybody who hasn't seen Mystic Mondays yet. That is amazing. Thank you, Jess. Yeah, it's, color has always been hugely important to me and Mystic Mondays is very colorful. And the thing that I love about it is that I believe that color has healing frequencies. So, you know, the color is very intentional and color in itself is a language and something that I think a lot of people experience when they start getting into tarot and I definitely have experienced this is that tarot can be intimidating there's 78 cards and there's so much symbolism depending on which deck you're looking at so I really aimed to get to the heart of the matter and there's many different layers of how one can do that but for me I really wanted it to be simple and for you to just get it based on looking at the image and not necessarily feeling intimidated that you don't know why that cross is in the corner or, you know, right. whatever Or if you get a deaf card, people are like, what does it mean? But I've, I, we got one of the readings from you and the mastermind. It's like, no, it also means rebirth and all of these things. So what are some ways that you incorporated tarot in your everyday? Yeah. So I actually pull a card, uh, on my app. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, and that's a really accessible way to just pull a card a day and kind of reflect on what is happening in your life. And just to give you, I would say framing or 
guidance, you know, however you'd like to look at it. Um, and I don't think there's any right or wrong way to interact with tarot because, you know, some people like to pull a card a day. I think that's kind of like the easiest way to introduce tarot as a ritual into your life. And I also believe that by doing that, you create this habit to connect to your intuition and your inner self on a daily basis, which increases your intuitive muscles, which gets you into a space every day where you might not have to really slow down and to reflect. And I know people like to do that in different ways, like with meditation or journaling, but I think that tarot provides a gateway and a portal to understand yourself more because they're essentially assigned to a prompt. And so it kind of gives you a framework of what to think about and they're all universal themes like every card represents something totally relatable in everyone's life like everyone goes through these 78 cards um so that's something that i like to do sometimes i like to pull cards i'm actually looking at my altar right now which is just like a space on my bookshelf but i have some cards there that i pulled out to really amplify that energy that I like I'm calling in mm -hmm. and um I know people like to pull spreads I pull spreads occasionally I wouldn't say every day that would be more of a I would say like a new moon or full moon ritual that I like to do but it really depends like sometimes if there is something that's happening in my life then sometimes I will do a full spread but most of the time it's very casual you know you pull a card here and there um, and just connect with yourself and have that intention when you come to the cards. Mm -hmm. And creating that space. Are there some misconceptions about tarot? Definitely. There's definitely misconceptions. Like you mentioned, uh, the death card literally representing death. We as people um, and as beings, we experience death and it's a very natural process. Like every year the, the leaves fall off the trees and essentially die and then there's winter and then spring comes anew so it is a cycle we experience all the time not not even just with the seasons but it could be something um like your your skin cells are shedding all the time right. so we are actually always in a process of death and rebirth, and rebirth. yeah i mean to put it into context with you getting fired and with all the shipping things that happened, did that felt like death of certain expectations or death of stories you were holding on to? Could that be a way to interpret it? <laughs> That's you a really good question. <laughs> yeah, you can say I'm wrong too. I, <laughs> I don't have as much experience as you do in interpreting any message that comes through for you. Well, I think it comes back to beliefs you know, um, and I think that we tend to repeat the same patterns over and over again when there's a lesson to be learned. Mm -hmm. So from that first experience of moving out to LA, being on my own and getting fired, I think that really, I really had to figure things out. And um, I'm naturally independent, but I think in that moment, it really tested me into what I needed to kind of I guess, transform into, I ended up getting, you know, I would say a quote unquote better job after that. Um, but I, I think that was meant to happen. And, and I think that is part of my story. And I think because that happened, it made me realize that I didn't really want to work at a corporation or anything like that. And that was the very start. Um, and it also shattered a lot of beliefs that I thought I needed to be like I thought going to college and getting this degree would be the answer and I think a lot of people believe that because that's what we're kind of fed in society but I think through that experience of just like oh it doesn't work out for everyone and and having that experience so early on at the beginning of my professional career I think was um really eye-opening for me mm -hmm. but yeah I I definitely since you asked in that way and I hadn't actually thought about it, um, I definitely feel like I went through a lot of different transformations in my life and a lot of death and rebirth. Although 
I was thinking about it in a different way for me, but I think I have gone through a lot of changes um, and I'm still here. <laughs> You're still here. It's so true. And you mentioned I cackled, but I was on mute. You could hear when you said you're like, I chose an energy session instead of therapy because it was more affordable. What happens in an energy session? And was that something that you were used to growing up or it was a new concept that you just wanted to try out? I guess I've always been into this kind of stuff and I liken it to going to the bookstore and like what section of the bookstore you go to. And I think that's really telling. So I would used to go to the metaphysical section, like, and Mm -hmm. look up my palmistry or astrology and all of that stuff. And I would also go to, um, I loved reading like, well, when I was a teenager, obviously I loved reading like young adult fiction. And I think what I used to love and by the way I used to love reading a lot (laughs) like I used to read a lot a lot so children's books like books that like took you to different worlds and places and I definitely feel like that informs me in how I write now and how I create these different worlds for uh, myself and other people um I'm sorry what was your original question (laughs) of energy work like how I guess you were always interested to try the energy session and was that the first time that you I guess dip your toes even deeper yeah so that was probably the first time I had an energy session like that um but there are lots of different kinds of energy sessions so I wouldn't even I'm not even sure what to call her type of energy session but basically she um led me down like a meditation and then she just kind of like intuited some things that had happened to me in my life and then we did a lot of visualization and she just kind of moved some energy around in my body with I guess her energy and her guides and um you know the visualizations that she was guiding me through but I think because I've worked with a lot of healers now over the years and everyone has their own special sauce. So Mm -hmm. I would say it really depends on how you like to work and who you're connected with because some people like to be connected with their guides or their ascended masters or their angels or I always call it like a spiritual team. So it's really, you know, whoever you'd like to call in, it could be your ancestors, it could even be your descendants if you like to think that way. Um, I've never heard but, of that before. That's fascinating. Descendants? Yeah. Yeah. So I have called in some descendants before, which is really cool. And you can also call in, you know, your animals. If you have some animals that, you know, you like that protect you or give you guidance. So for example, if you see the same animal over and over again, that's often a sign. That's that's like how I interpret it. Um, like for example, I, I re- was recently in Costa Rica and I, I just kept seeing owls everywhere. And literally um, like this journal I'm showing you right now has an owl on it and I got it in Costa Rica. And um, I, I wasn't even planning on getting a journal but at the center that I was at, this was the very last one they had. And they also had a huge mural of an owl there But my point is, is that if you keep seeing these symbols, it's kind of like the same thing as what I was talking about with tarot. It's all a language. And these are different ways that your guides or your spiritual team is trying to communicate with you. So some people like to see the same numbers over and over again, or shall I say, they see the same numbers (laughs) over and over over and again, and they may, may not like it, but they may see them and they're signs. It's a language in which they your spiritual team is trying to communicate with you. And that's that's a lot of different things, even if in reality, not like, not that that's not real, but what I'm saying, like rooted in this realm, in this 3D realm, um, English is a language. We're using that language right now to communicate. Code is a language if you're a developer and there are many different ways to code. scent is a language you know everything that is present in your life is communicating to you in a way 
but sometimes you may not be able to understand because you are not educated in that language yet. Mm. And so it's about understanding the language, which will take time if you're not taught the language. Right. Oh, you know, from what I'm hearing, as you dive deeper into, you know, the world of tarot, astrology, and all these different healing modalities, it's kind of, like you said, honing into your intuition, honing into who you are, and coming home to yourself. And it's just, the more you practice it, it becomes this tool that helps you grow and magnify this instead of, because I know some misconceptions I've seen and you know, it's always, I don't like using that word, but like in the past, I've heard people call it woo woo, but I'm like, there's nothing wrong with it just because you don't understand it and you're not open to it. But that's just really to enhance the connection to yourself and what you want to accomplish. So the way you broke it down was beautiful. And I hope anybody who's listening to this, they can feel empowered about this instead of feeling that, you know, I'm pulling a card today and I gave my power away when it's not really the fact. Do you ever feel that way? No, I haven't. But I've heard when people talk about astrology, they're like, oh, I'm feeling crappy. Maybe it's something in the sign. So, but I don't want to read into it because that means I'm giving, that's an excuse for why I'm feeling crappy. And I've had conversations like maybe perhaps look into it. You recognize you're feeling not so good. So what is this telling you? But I think people often from what I've seen is that they feel like, something that is written or something is said means that it's meant to happen. I don't know if I'm making sense at all. Like almost as if it's taking away your power and choice. Hmm. That's really interesting. I can see how some people might interpret it that way. I think for me, it's just understanding that we are one. So we're interconnected. So for example, if you're feeling tired during a certain full moon, then you are becoming aware of your environment and how that is affecting you and that you are a part of the universe and that whatever is going on in the cosmos is essentially something that's going on within you. So I always like to think about the universe as like, yes, you are a part of the universe, but there's also a universe within you and mm. understanding those different dynamics of the inner reflecting the outer and vice versa, I think that can kind of help maybe alleviate that sense of anxiety around not having control because that's what it sounds like to me, like people right. not that's having so control in their situation and giving away their power to the cosmos. But in a sense, I mean, we say this in tarot all the time that you have free, free will. And even if you have a tarot reading and your tarot reader or yourself kind of interprets it this way, where it says something is going to happen, you still have a choice in which it may not happen at all. I've had many tarot readings where they say this thing is going to happen and it doesn't happen. Mm -hmm. But maybe, you know, maybe that's what I needed to hear in that moment, you know, and maybe that's what I, but I think that's what the thing is, is that people expect answers. But I think what it comes down to is that when you look at tarot and any other healing modality, it's really a reflection of you. So if you don't have the answers, how will they reveal the answers? Yeah. And that's what yeah. I experience with tarot because tarot for me more more than gives me the answers it just confirms what I already know and I know a lot of other people experience that if you don't know the answers that's okay and I think that's part of the like trusting that needs to happen more um and even if you don't agree with your tarot reading for example or your horoscope or <laughs> whatever um there's just many ways to interpret it so that it can benefit you. Yeah. Yes. Totally. You're so much more eloquent than I am able to say it. <laughs> but that's so true because, like you said, all these modalities are here to 
or a reflection or or a reflection of how you're seeing things. So if you're feeling stuck and you're not getting the answers, then maybe there's more to look within. And I think that makes people uncomfortable a lot of times. Oh yeah. That's why Definitely. they have expectations when they're, you know, pulling certain cars. They're like, I want a good one. What does that even mean? What does that mean? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the expectations are really interesting because I think there's some sort of energy exchange gone awry when we have expectations because Mm -hmm. when we approach our tarot reading with expectations, it's kind of like if you think about like the law of attraction, for example, you know, they always say like to surrender (laughs) to whatever you're trying to manifest and to, you know, not check up on it every 10 seconds or whatever it is to really give it space to co-create with your desires. And I think that's the thing that a lot of people forget is that you need to create space in order for that desire to appear for you in a way that the universe can provide so it might not appear in the way you'd like or it might not appear on your timeline but maybe you weren't ready you know six months ago maybe you are now and I think that's like part of the journey like would life be interesting if we knew all the answers if we knew the path that we were supposed to be on we all came here with lessons to learn and I think sometimes people forget like they want a plan, they want security, they want, you know, stability, which is fine. It's totally fine to want to fulfill your basic human needs. But I think the other part of, you know, our soul evolution on earth is really figuring out like why we're here and our purpose. Hmm. And sometimes that's not provided in a tarot reading. Sometimes that's excavating deep inside yourself and asking yourself what you really want outside of all of the external noise that is presented to you which is why (laughs) yes yes and the conditioning and that is why like I know my parents don't understand what I'm doing (laughs) (laughs) oh we can go down that route same here (laughs) um But you know what? They respect it because I'm doing what I'm doing. And, you know, something that a a major lifestyle change that I made recently is that I no longer eat meat as of right now since returning from my trip. And they've been very supportive. And that actually surprised me because my family is full of meat eaters. But I think that goes to show like if you just step more into the truth of who you are. So, for example, I guess the truth of who I currently am is I just am not choosing to eat meat right now, which is okay. Mm -hmm. Um, But you'll be surprised when people support you. (laughs) Right, right. Because I think more than often we, we anticipate the resistance because either it happened in the past or it's something that they're used to. But when it works, it's like, oh, things do work out as well. It wasn't as hard as I thought it would be. Exactly. And I think that's part of like, when we try to fit ourselves into these boxes. And I know I felt so much frustration from trying to fit myself into this career path that I thought I needed to go down. And oh, if I could go back and tell myself, like, it's not worth the stress <laughs> or the anxiety <laughs> or any of it. Um, I'm so much more at ease now, just letting go of those expectations that I thought I needed to be or do. And I've experienced more success because of it. Amen. Amen. It's true, though. What were some ways that you cultivate that inner trust? Because I think a big part of surrender that people think it's just like let go and not do anything when in fact, that's not true. That's not manifestation. It isn't not doing. It's getting out of your own way. You're still doing, but you're also allowing space to receive. So how do you cultivate that inner trust to surrender so I used to really be either in the past or the future and I was like never in the present and so a life-changing moment for me was reading the power of now by Eckhart Tolle have you read it I haven't it's in my to-do list to read oh it's so good but I I literally 
I think it changed my life in really profound ways because I just started noticing things that I never noticed before. I just noticed how the sun glistened on the leaves or I was, I was, I was walking, there was a breeze and just really appreciating all the little things in my life. I think that was um, something that, that I took for granted. And I, you know, I was really modeled a certain way of living that didn't necessarily care about those things or wasn't aware of those things. And so um, I think this was about maybe like six years ago or, or more, I'm not sure. But um, that was really, really helpful because if you're in the present, you're fully in the present. You're not thinking about the past or the future. You're just in the moment. And honestly, the only thing you can do and take action in and make magic in is in the present. You can't make it in the past because it's already happened, but your past informs your future and your past informs your present actions. Whereas you can't necessarily live in the future either because if you live there, it's paralyzing you from taking action in the present too. So really all you can do is stay present as much as you can. And of course, it's great to have a plan and, and reflect and do all the things you need to do. But I think most people tend to forget that being in the present and just really enjoying what's around you and being aware of your environments and how that's affecting you, that all matters. That all takes you to where you want to go. Yes, yes. There was this quote about how, how you are now is how you'll be when you get there. And so often we're frazzled, at least I was when I was like back in my agency days, like frazzled, everything was due yesterday. And then I was in this constant state of like anxiety and I hit the go and then I was like, okay, I'm still anxious. It's like the next go. And it, you know, it's kind of like you need to smell the roses. Otherwise, what's the point of planting them? Oh yeah. Like they always say, who always says, um, but they always say, celebrate your small wins because otherwise what is the point <laughs> yeah and we get lost of all the possibilities usually like the best stuff that could happen instead of what if it does work out exactly I'm yeah I'm trying to like get myself in a place where I'm feeling more comfortable and thinking and letting myself kind of daydream about the good things instead of obsessing. And I know we briefly touched this topic about, you know, choosing a lifestyle that might be confusing for our parents or something they don't necessarily understand. And I think part of our deconditioning when we come home to ourselves is also detaching from the expectations others have of you. So how do you How do you come at peace with it when you know that you can't convince anyone else that what you're doing makes you happy? So this is something I have personally struggled with uh, having grown up in, my parents are fairly traditional and I'm not. <laughs> and um, I think the more I realized that the more I become myself, the more I can help other people, the more that I can do good in this world by just being myself. And that benefits everyone else around me because if I'm not myself, I'm holding on to this weight that's not mine. And I think that's important to understand and discern what is yours and what is theirs because often parents project their <laughs> un- I, I would say unfulfilled desires onto their children and um, they just want what they never had <laughs> kind of. Mm -hmm. um, and you got to stick up for yourself if you're experiencing that. And so the more I said no to them, the stronger I got with myself and it's all with love, of course, but if you cave into other people's desires when they're conflicting with your own, you're really in the process repeating this pattern of abandoning yourself. Mm -hmm. And that's what I had to realize that every time I said no to myself, when I said yes to somebody else was a form of betrayal. And after a while that takes a toll and you start to lose yourself. 
and you start to look for yourself and other people and their validation, their acknowledgement of who you are through their eyes, even if that's not a true reflection of who you are. Yeah. And when you measure yourself like this, it's never enough. Exactly. Exactly. Are you ready to create space for ease and alignment? I've created a free starter guide to help you go from frazzle to focus. It's a guide for the overwhelmed go-getter who's eager to find more ease, clarity, and alignment in their lives, so you can quiet the noise and strengthen your connection within. After all, we can't align what we don't know is misaligned. Simply grab your free copy at wholeandunleashed.com slash guide. Oof, that was so profound, you know, having, knowing that when you're having the discernment to understand what's yours and what's not yours. And I think sometimes with expectations, and it's also fears, we absorb a lot of people's fears even when it's not ours. We might have the certainty to know that if I do this, it feels right. But then people, friends, people that come from a very good place, they don't know your dreams. They don't know your desires. So they're going to fill it with doubt because they don't understand. And it's not their intent to, it's just their own fears. And just even understanding that it might not be yours is so empowering. And you can choose to, I'm not going to let it rub off me. Maybe I'm a little bit scared, but it's okay because I also trust in myself. Yeah, I think what was truly life-changing for me was when one of uh, my previous life coaches told me, everyone's projecting. <laughs> and, yes. and that, I mean, you start to like look at what people are saying to you in a less personal way because you know that it's not about you. And, and, and vice versa, you know when it is about you. And when you can take it in, and usually when it is about you, in my experience, it comes from a very loving place. You know, it comes like they truly see you and support you. But on the other hand, on the flip side of what I've experienced, when there's some someone lashing out, when, you know, someone's belittling you, when um, someone dismisses your idea, that is normally like like the whole parent projection thing. It's normally through their own unfulfilled desires. It has nothing to do with you. And I think that can help a lot of people just understand and kind of get through that fear of putting themselves out there because nobody's really paying that much attention to you. <laughs> and that's something that I was like, you know, for because perfection um, or perfectionism. And as a visual artist, it was just something I think was innate in me of just wanting everything to be perfect and look great and, you know, do this all the time. And it really stops you. It really yeah. stops you. Um, and so I've kind of adapted kind of like a, you know what, it's going to be messy sometimes, but at least I'm moving. I'm constantly moving. Um, and if I'm going off in the wrong direction, then I can course direct at any time, but at least I'm constantly improving myself. I'm constantly moving and it doesn't have to be perfect. It's all an experiment. Yeah. Yeah. There's no end game in the experiment because you're always evolving. You're always growing. Yeah. And in a way, like even the wrong directions give you so many lessons on what you don't want. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, like the, I think, you know, failure is feedback. And when we experience failure, we can just ask ourselves, why do I feel this? Like, what, number one, what am I feeling? Why am I feeling this way? And what do these emotions inform me? Because emotions are also another form of language and a way of you communicating with yourself. And I think a lot of us tend to avoid our emotions and tend to, I suppose, not want to feel the quote unquote bad emotions. But if we think about our emotions as feedback as well, that can help us guide us towards what we like to do. Like what lights you up? You know, what is guiding you towards your joy? What do you do that makes you feel more joy? 
And what is it that you do right now that is making you feel tired, lethargic, sad, angry? You know, those are signs too. Yes, I couldn't agree more. It's so important to ask yourself the right questions. And I think be courageous enough to listen to the answers. Because that might also be the scary part where, you know, what if the answer says, I need to leave this place, this relationship, whatever it is. And it's, again, coming back to believing that the answer that's coming from within is here to serve you rather than deter you. Yeah, totally. And I don't think people like the answers all the time. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. Like the expectations attached to, I only want the best, whatever cards they are. Um, you've also published other beautiful decks. Can you tell me a little bit about it? I know there's a crystal one. There's some mystic creature ones as well. Tell me all about it. Yeah, so there is the Mystic Mondays Crystal Grid deck. So I'm all about, through what I create, uh, creating rituals that can enhance one's life. And so what you can actually do with these crystal grid cards is you can build your own crystal grids because the cards are hexagon shaped and they're very unique. And uh, I might be biased, but they're beautiful. <laughs> they are, they are. I've seen them. <laughs> they're gorgeous. <laughs> Thank you. And uh, you can build your own crystal grid. So the thing is you set your intention and it creates that ritual. You can either pull a card a day and build your grid for the week. You can do it for new moon rituals. You can do it with your friends. And so it's a very interactive card set where it's, it comes back to setting your intentions and then amplifying it with the crystals that you select. And do they replace physical crystals? Like what if I don't have any physical crystals to start with? Can I start with your deck? Oh yeah, definitely. So the other part of this is that I was thinking about how people like to travel with a bunch of crystals and I know I do. (laughs) And I was just like, this is insane. Like, why would you want to carry all these crystals? Like put them in your bra or your pocket or whatever, if you just have (laughs) a card. (laughs) Yeah. And um, so this has 80 different crystals in it and not everyone can afford 80 crystals because some of them are quite expensive. And these have a wide range of different kinds of crystals that uh, correlate to your different chakras and they're all very colorful. And I actually learned um, a 3D program to generate some of these crystals because they are, yeah, so it's like, um, it's Cinema 4D. I don't know if anyone's familiar with that, but I learned that program to create this deck uh, because I just had that vision of just creating um, a crystal grid deck that was that kind of felt otherworldly, you know, kind of like magical and like kind of fantastical, which I guess is what I like. So there's that. Um, There's a lot of different uses for this. So yeah, you can like pull crystals out and just kind of use that energy of the crystal. Like you can put it on your altar or you can make a crystal grid or you can pull out, you know, I, I saw some, this is what I love about creating these decks is that people in the wild just like do all sorts of things with them and it's awesome so someone made this crystal grid with just the heart ones like just the heart crystals and I thought that was super beautiful um how she did that and I'm just saying you can literally do anything with it you can build you can build your own and you or you can pull spreads like similar to other oracle decks out there if you want to pull for example three different crystals and use a, a, a oracle spread or tarot like spread because tarot and oracle spreads are kind of the same um you can do that too it has many functions and the other deck that is coming out in the fall of 2021 is cosmic creatures so that's inspired by i would say spirit animals spirit allies and um There's 66 animals and they all have a specific message attached to them. So for example, like how I mentioned how I was seeing owls a Mm -hmm. lot earlier this year, um, there's a meaning for that. You know, owls often represent wisdom and carry, uh, carry that wisdom with them through, through different portals and there's magic in that and um so these different animals can come through for you at different times of your life and just give you that message that you need to hear in that moment 
How is the process when you start designing and illustrating them? Hmm. So I, I would say I always start with the artwork first because that's what I'm most comfortable with. Um, that's like my background. And so I use Illustrator uh, mostly for the Crystal Grid deck. I use a combination of Cinema 4D and Photoshop. Um, but for Mystic Mondays, Tarot, and the Cosmic Creatures deck, I use Illustrator primarily, if you guys are art nerds. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I often do research too while I'm doing it. So I figure out what the artwork is first, and then I will go through that. Well, actually, let me back up. I do the research part first <laughs> by kind of understanding like how many cards are in the deck and like how many animals and which animals I'd like to do and then I go into the artwork piece um, and then as I'm writing it's it's interesting because the writing process is like completely different I I've just noticed for myself that I needed to be quiet and I need to be alone <laughs> and writing for me is just a very um, I just like need to be completely present in whatever words want to come out of me so for example with design I can kind of zone out and I can I can kind of like watch a show at the same time if I wanted to or you know play my music or you know kind of jam out that way but the writing process is like night and day completely different and so um I just find that interesting because I never considered myself to be a writer until I got published. So like, yeah. Only then did you say, oh, I must be a writer. Yeah, I must be a writer, I guess. Um, because I would casually write for fun, but you know, and I love to journal, but not, you know, I've never written anything professionally. And so, um, but I think again, that goes back to what I was talking about, about how much I love to read. I think that really impacted me in how I write today because um obviously I enjoy it <laughs> enough to keep going um but yeah that's pretty much the process yeah yeah it's so much fun to see you kind of really infuse all those different parts of yourself with what you love to do and learn about to create this I'm going to call it empire because that's what it is this world this mystic Monday's world where you know you get to dive into wonder explore and learn about yourself I think that's the most exciting part. It's learning about yourself and knowing what you can do to maybe grow and expand. And that's why I love your app as well. And I see that you're expanding, integrating more astrological readings, um, some more details about the planets. Tell us about that. Yeah, so it's funny how the app started. So it launched with the Kickstarter in 2017. And at the time, I was like, oh, everyone has a phone, so they can just download the app first and see if they like the deck, which has happened and has been great. Um, but a limitation I experienced from my publisher, and they've just recently annulled this, thank goodness, but I just wasn't allowed to expand upon the tarot portion of the app. So then that got me thinking, I'm like, oh, like I know personally, I love to find out more things about myself. So I'm always on you know, like whether it's like human design or astrology or numerology or all the things, yeah. I always look for <laughs> more information about myself. And I found that I just had all of these different folders with all this, all of these reports. And um, so that got me thinking, I'm like, okay, well, like, you know, Mystic Mondays could have like a report section where people could input their personal information, like what you would put in an, a typical astrology app like your birth time, birth date, et cetera. Um, but the difference is that Mystic Mondays has not just astrology, but also, also your tarot birth cards, your numerology, your, your um, Chinese zodiac, yeah, your flower, your birth flower of the month, your moon phases. So all of that is compiled into one place because I know something that was driving me crazy was like <laughs> having all these different folders and all these different places. Um, and essentially compiling like the ultimate metaphysical profile for myself. So that was the start of um, creating these reports for Mystic Mondays. And I definitely want to keep expanding it. So that's in the works. And um, 
there's also compatibility. So there's a matching feature. So if you add your friends, you can also see how you match up with them um, in terms of like, we're expanding it. Um, but right now there's tarot birth cards and your Chinese zodiac and your moon phases. So you can see like, for example, like I was born under the waning moon phase. And for example, maybe you were born on the full moon. So we could match each other and see what that means for our relationship. Oh, that's fascinating. I didn't know about the moon charts things as well. I'm going to like dig into it. I remember sharing about this app and a couple of my friends, like I've never downloaded an app so fast because they saw they were able to see all these other, you know, numerology, Chinese horoscope and see how they might work together. I think integrating all of these different languages into one is like another beauty that you've created. Yeah. So the thing is, is that I see it all as being interconnected. And that's kind of what was interesting about looking at the other apps out there because they only really focus on one field at a time, you know, whether it's just an astrology app or just a numerology app or just whatever. And I know for me and the other people that are into this, like they tend to um, use them in tandem all together. So astrology with tarot or numerology with tarot or, you know, like all of these are actually related in some way. And so um, like, for example, like the major arcana cards in tarot, they're all associated with an astrological sign or planet. So they all actually relate to each other. And that's kind of how I saw it is that it's all integrated. So why not use it in a way that how you would actually use it in your real life? Yeah. It's so much fun. Like I can get lost reading at it for hours. And I was like telling people, can you download? I want to compare it. I want to, <laughs> I just want to learn more about it. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, super fun. I'm so glad that you're loving it because it was, it's been a lot of work <laughs> I and I, I'm really proud of it. Yeah. You've been doing so much. And I think we met a couple months ago in a mastermind and seeing you kind of incubate all your ideas and expand from there has been amazing and I know you embrace the always a student forever student model and you've done some breath work what are some other projects or experiences that you're working on right now that is a great question so I actually just got accepted into an accelerator just yesterday <laughs> congratulations so, yeah thank you so I'll I guess I'm kind of taking my tech startup journey more seriously um, because I kind of built this app just winging it <laughs> like be by yourself do you just kind of like connect all the dots yeah I designed all the screens um, the only part that I didn't do was the actual development because I'm not a developer but literally the whole app has been a passion project and brainchild of me. And um, I did contract out some writing, but it's all based on my voice. So, yeah. and I edited all the writing as well. So um, it really has been a project spearheaded by myself. Yeah. And um, I guess I'm at a point where, because I've been a solopreneur for such a long time that I'm ready to expand and I think, you know, something like this accelerator could really help me understand how to do that. Um, and I also know that, like, I find myself to be a multifaceted person. So, of course, you know, I have this app, but I also have the physical decks that I made. Um, and I feel like that's not necessarily ever going to go away, like, but because they work in tandem together and, mm -hmm. you know, they're all kind of interconnected in that way. Um, but as far as what I'm working on, I suppose that's something to look forward to that that starts in like a few weeks. Um, and I just got the acceptance letter this morning. Um, and I got accepted yesterday, though, just to like yeah. clarify. <laughs> and, um, and what else am I doing? I'm doing a past life regression workshop in July. Oh I was supposed God. to do it last year. But of course, it got canceled because of the pandemic. So it's moved to this year. So I'm really excited about doing that because I've been looking forward to that for a while. Um, I also have my, I, this is probably going to be my last breathwork training. Um, but I believe that's in May. So it's level three. 
Mm-hmm. And I just enjoy, so the thing is, I love doing all this stuff because I love learning more about myself because I find that the more, you know, you go through these type of programs and trainings, um, I really do it for self-development. I mean, I, you know, I could, of course, do it for other people. And I have, like, for example, I went through um, Reiki training. So I went through all the levels to Reiki master training. And, you know, sometimes I'll do Reiki for, you know, friends and family. Like mm-hmm. I know I, I led my mom through uh, inner child meditation in Cantonese. Wow. And that was like the first time I ever did that for her. And I know she had a really profound experience. And I thought that was cool that I was able to do that for her. That's so can you lead my mom. <laughs> <laughs> if she's That's so funny. All the Cantonese like uh, children will be like, can you please lead our parents? Because they need a lot of inner child healing. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah that is really funny because my cousin said the exact same thing when I said <laughs> that to her um or when I shared that with her so um yeah gladly you know one day one day yeah when you start your in additional business helping Cantonese children <laughs> and parents reconnect that is yeah. thank you for sharing that you're also learning because you're doing it for yourself I think a lot of times people go into trainings with the expectations and the pressure to want to either in quotations, make the money back or, you know, the training is to become a teacher. So I have to be that, but no, if you're enjoying, cause I think you also took a yoga training as well. Oh no, I wanted to, oh, but I haven't, I haven't. Not yet, not yet. Not yet, not yet. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's amazing. Thank you for sharing your journey, what you know about tarot, all your wisdom with us today. Um, I wanted to wrap this up with some rapid fire questions. And are you ready? <laughs> no yeah, <question>. let's go. <laughs> What's the best compliment you've ever received? That's a really good question. I get a lot of compliments on my smile because it's so, I guess, big. And I think something I like about that compliment is because my mom and I have the same smile. And I think for a long time, I really resisted being connected to my mom in any sort of way. <laughs> but we <laughs> do we have... <laughs> Yeah, but we do have like a loud laugh and a big smile. So that's nice. And the thing about that compliment too, is that it's simple. You know, it's not like, I mean, I always appreciate when someone compliments my brain, (laughs) (laughs) but I also just like, you can just, yeah, tell me I have a beautiful smile. That's nice too. (laughs) True too. (laughs) A book that's changed your life. Well, the power of now, like I mentioned earlier, changed my life. Um, I feel like there were many other ones too. There was one called the North Star and I'm completely forgetting who it's by right now, but uh, that one was also really impactful too. The North Star, I'll look it up. What does coming home to yourself mean? Coming home to myself means really trusting my own inner voice and my own wisdom that I know that I can make the right decisions for myself and that it doesn't need to be validated by anyone outside of me. Yes. What would you like more of? What would I like more of? I would love more abundance and more I think, aligned connection. Advice for younger self? Advice for a younger self. It's all going to be okay. So trust. I would just like to tell her to trust. Got this. (laughs) Finally, where can people find you? People can primarily find me on at Mystic Mondays uh, on Instagram. Um, There's also mysticmondays.com. And you you can find my personal page at grace.duong on Instagram too. I'm there too. Do you have any programs, any additional services, offers coming up? Yeah, so I will have my relaunch tarot course later on this year. Um, and that is all about coming back to yourself because all of the cards are basically speaking to your own experiences. And that's how I like to use tarot and how I like to view tarot is, 
um, essentially it's a mirror to yourself and that's how you learn about each card and remember what it means. So we all have different filters uh, and experiences that we bring to the cards. Um, and that's kind of how I like to frame this tarot course that it, it really is more about learning about yourself through these cards. Um, and in the process of learning about yourself, you also learn about the cards. So it goes hand in hand. So that's coming up. Um, there are, of course, new developments happening on the app. So stay tuned for that. Um, we were just funded on ifundwomen.com recently, which is a crowdfunding platform for entrepreneurial women. Um, so that just ended the other day, actually. No, yesterday. Oh, today. <laughs> today. today. <laughs> yesterday. Yeah, today. Yesterday was the last day. Um, and so that's exciting. There's a lot of exciting things going on there. Um, oh, and then I did, I, I'm in the works of creating a new deck, but it's oh. still too early to talk about. So, um, but hey, hey world there's another deck coming out too oh I look forward to it all your creations are so so beautiful and a reflection of you that energy it's it's contagious so thank you oh, thank you <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much for joining me here today Grace this was a pleasure thanks for having me thank you so much for listening to the whole and unleashed podcast what was your takeaway from today's conversation? Let me know in the comments or review. I would love to hear from you. Subscribe to get new episodes each week and visit wholeandunleashed.com for more information.